Hey guys, this is Richard from Night Stalking Videos. I uh, wanted to put a little video together here. If you're watching this, you're probably having some trouble understanding your, this is a AGM Rattler. This one model here is a TS-25, 25 millimeter lens in the 256 Revolution. It's at second to the bottom of the list, but it's just strictly the best meat and potatoes poor man can afford type uh, thermal and they work damn well. Uh, I'm very happy with this one. Uh, the resolution basically is going to get better until you start getting up into the $3,000 scopes. Uh, it'd take $1,000 for this same scope to go up to a 384. And I'm hunting beside a 384, TS25 384, and at 100, 150 yards, 200 yards, I edit the videos and I don't see much difference. Uh, you get below 100 yards, yeah, there's a lot of difference, but Main thing is, you see stuff that you can't see with that infrared. I've got two or three infrareds, and I mean, I had to get a thermal because I was sitting there at 42 yards. We had Johnson grass. They counted like, I don't know, 12, 14 hogs at 42 yards. And I would see an eyeball glow with my infrared once in a while, but I never could get on the shot. They went ahead and shot because I couldn't see them at 42 yards. So now that I got this, I see them. So it all works out real well. Anyway, um, what I want to basically do is go over, I'm going to set this thing up on my laptop and uh, I'll turn the camera uh, on the laptop to where you will see me scrolling through. I'll be using the buttons on top of this. Uh, the buttons, I'm not going to get into the buttons because it's real self-explanatory in the booklet even though the booklet is very vague on a lot of stuff and that's what I'm going to try to cover for you. But the buttons are pretty much, you can look at the book and you'll understand the buttons. Um, and that's kind of like the little Bible, keep it with you because you'll get confused until you use it a bunch. All right, well, uh, other than that, one other thing I want to go with, when you set it up, it's always going to be nice and bright and sunshiny because you're never going to have overcast day when you try to set up a thermal. So um, one of my heat signatures that I use that works real well, sun out or not, that is the bottom of a Dr. Pepper can, Pepsi can, Coke, it don't matter. That little sucker right there will shine almost like a Cubeam flashlight and very inexpensive. Everybody's got them. Uh, you can stick that on the target. I like to use a big piece of cardboard just plain brown cardboard. You get a bunch of writing and stuff and you get hot marks, cold marks, and it just really messes with you. So clean cardboard, stick that in the middle of it, you got it. A lot of people like to use the hand warmers, but at 100 yards, sometimes those hand warmers are about as hot as a cardboard. The one that I prefer more than any of them is piece of tinfoil, double A battery, shiny side out. You'll roll this thing up in the tin foil, don't roll it super thick, just enough to cover it. You know, probably half of this paper is all, all this tin foil you need. And once you get it rolled up, then you mash the ends. Once you mash the ends, this battery will start heating this tin foil up to probably somewhere between 110 to 120 degrees. I mean, it gets super hot, a hell of a lot hotter than it's gonna be outside. And then all you gotta do is your cardboard, cut your little like one inch X in your cardboard shove that sucker in there like that where you're just looking at the end of it and at 100 yards that sucker's going to look like a silver dollar because of the heat signature expanding on it. I prefer that because I don't care how hot it is outside it ain't no 120, 130 degrees and that works real well. Also when you do your one, what we call one shot but they call it one shot correction uh, when you shoot your shot and you're on your target and you want to do the one shot where you make another battery and you go down and you cut a hole where your bullet hole is, stick another battery in there, and then that way you can have your reticle there and you can sit there and bring the one shot down to the other battery. When you push select on that and you enter that in, you're sighted in. It's that simple. As um, long as you understand how to get to that part. So that's where I'm at. I'm fixing to uh, get the laptop set up. And once I do that, uh, you'll hear my voice like I say you don't need to see me you know you need to see what I'm doing I'll call out everything I'm doing I'll be pushing these buttons up here which like I say your book will get you familiar with that so let me break here and get the uh, 
internet fired up, get the hotspot, you have to turn your hotspot on on your scope. It's, uh, let's see, they call it the hotspot, but it's also your Wi-Fi. So it's basically one in both. You gotta have your hotspot on. I'm using a tablet, you gotta have your hotspot on, you gotta have your Wi-Fi on. You have to use your serial number that comes on the box, because I ain't found one on the damn scope yet. But it's a J with eight numbers. The J is a capital J. Make sure you capitalize it or it won't work. But on your, when you're setting up your cell phone, you can use your cell phone, laptop, computer, you can use your iPad like I'm using. But when you go to your Wi-Fi and enter password, it's J, whatever your serial number is, capital J. And once you do that, you have to download uh, a app. It's called T-Vision. You download that T-Vision app and it's free and that allows all this crap to talk together. And uh, like I say, I will do that and get it all online. And if you have any questions, if you want to know if you're having trouble getting it to download your pictures to your laptop and things like that, if y'all let me know in the comments, uh, I'll do specific videos for whatever you want, whatever you're having trouble with. We can either talk back and forth in comments or I'll do a video on it. I mean, like I said, I pretty much know this thing inside and out for the most part. So, uh, you know, like I say, let me get set up and we'll get started. Okay, guys, I'm back. Got my laptop set up front. Um, as you can see, that uh, Dr. Pepper can I was telling you, the bottom of it, as you can see right there, that's in my front living room here in the house. The air condition set at 70 degrees, and you see what kind of thermal signature I'm getting. I don't know what it is about that aluminum bottom, but works damn well. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get over here on the gun, and you will be able to see, as I start bringing everything on, We'll make sure it's coming on here. I'm pushing the center menu button. That brings up our menu. Okay. Your brightness, I set that at three. That's just what works out best for me. The other, the other two guys that also have these, they set them at three as well. This one right here is your contrast. It's set at three as well. You just have to play with that outside at night with and without animals. See how you like which one you want. Uh, this right here is your hotspot network. I have this turned on. And the reason it says network hotspot because it is on. Otherwise, you wouldn't be having that video right now. And then your battery. That's set at three volts. Your battery's inside this, the uh, 123As. They're three volt batteries. You have to set that at three volts. You can get one of those external car charger batteries, you know, the one little battery packs that you plug in, plug it into your phone, and it charges your battery up. You can run on those as well. Those are 3.7 volt, and you can plug that right into the side in your accessory port with the cable you got with it, and plug it USB right into that battery, and you can run off those batteries. You can buy those big heavy battery packs and run for hours. You'll get about three and a half hours, four hours out of this one. The colder it is outside, the more it eats the batteries up because it has to put out more heat on that filter to get it hot enough for it to work correctly. So cold weather, you might want to switch to lithium batteries. Makes it last a little longer. All right, done shut off again. So let's, uh, I'm making sure I'm still on there. Once you stop talking, when I stop messing with the, uh, pushing the menu again, it will shut itself off. So sitting there doing the menu, push and hold the center menu button. That says video save because I actually pushed the capture button. We were actually video. So my bad because I didn't see where I was pushing. Center button, we'll try this again. We're gonna push it to menu. Push and hold. Menu pops up. Okay. Now I'm going to the up button, which is a capture button, because while we got this on, it's not gonna uh, start the video Go there your hot tracking that thing when you turn that on It will sit there and it's got little X's and they will fly all over the screen looking for hot spots And when it finds it you'll have a hot spot and that'll tell you to zoom over that way and You know try to find out what it is so it actually directs you towards whatever it can see 
I don't like using it because I got enough trouble keep them across areas where I need them without stuff, you know, flying all over the page. Here we go again. I got to keep messing with these buttons or it's going to keep shutting off on us. Alright, here we go. Okay. This one right here is the measure. That is a deal where you can go in there if you look at the bottom you see this reticle you see that small tick line that I haven't got set I just put that on there so you would see it what you can do is you push your menu again oh, sorry let me back up you push the menu and okay there if you set up the top corner up there you can set your your distance and what you do is once you set that you go back and you set your that tick line what it basically does is <clears throat> I can do another video because that's pretty complex uh, basically you can set up those tick lines for like a hundred yards 200 yards 300 yards so you know it, it kind of works like your MOA marks or a standard scope uh, so uh, I'm gonna get this out of here all right you got the measure OCD, that's your on-screen display. If you take it, you click it, you get your OCD, which is on-screen display. You go and you can go down, hit the menu button, turn it on. Now if you see, you got your on-screen display up there. So you got it. Now you push the menu button and hold it. It locks it in. If you don't do that, you're not going to keep it. That's just your time and date. You go in there, self-explanatory, set your time and date up. This here is trajectory. Um, I'm going to come back to that one for the simple reason that it's when you're fine-tuning your scope. Okay, restore, stay out of that. Restore means I'm going to sell this to my buddy. I don't want nothing on it. I'm going to hit it. Everything's going back to factory settings. So you just wiped your scope out. It's like brand new. So stay off that one. Version, that's just different uh, setups and what you, uh, the version of the scope, it's a model number, serial number, and all that kind of stuff. Burn prevention, burn prevention is in case you screw up and raise it up and hit the sun, you can actually burn that filter in there and burn it out. Burn prevention will shut the shutter on it and lock it out until you get it out of the heat source and once you get it out of the heat source, then it'll turn back on. So it keeps you from screwing up and burning your scope up. Power on and off, that's just simply powering it on and off. Um, that right there is kind of setting up the, um, like the resolution stuff. There's ways you can go in there and fine tune it and everything. I have never had to mess with that. The CVBS. That is, if you're going to hook it up to a big monitor, it's a different cable that you have to hook into. That is basically for a monitor. The, uh, I think that's called the field focus correction. Uh, that is another thing to where it, you can set it up in different ways to where you'll hear this thing click every now and then. That's it refreshing. It's to do with setting up the refreshing and everything. I just leave mine at default. Uh, it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, your colors, that's just your reticle. Right now I'm on red. You got about four or five colors. You just hit the menu button again, and then you can scroll up and down, pick the color you want, hit the menu button, hold it, select it, boom, you've got your color. That right there, this is a reticle. This is where after you, you know, pull your bolt out on a bolt action and you bore sight at 25 yards, and you come here to reticle, you hit your menu, and you hit that. See up there at the top right now where it says reticle one? That's, I'm gonna go to the left. There's reticle two, it's a different reticle. There's reticle three, reticle four. And then there's your little square dot, that's reticle five. You got five different reticles. And then it closes and you hit it again, reticle one. This here 
is the one I like using that's with the little dot in the center of it but just so we can see it good I'm going to let's just keep it on reticle 4 alright now you go to the menu button again you hit it the freeze I don't use none of that you can read the book um, on it um, I've never bothered to get into it because I just what I was reading it ain't something I care to do if you want me to I can do a video on it uh, but it's something I do not use you hit it again now here's your meat and potatoes on adjusting your scope starting out when you bore sight it uh, this thing it may not be on X zero Y zero it may have a couple of numbers on it uh, if you notice my X is a plus 9 and my Y is a negative 23 that's what this thing sighted in at at 100 yards it's an inch high at 100 yards write those numbers down do not lose those numbers because if something happens to your scope it blanks out whatever you can put those numbers back in here you don't even have to bore sight it you don't have to shoot it again those numbers is dead true no matter what you do unless you take it off the gun or do something like that you get to those and let's say uh you know your your top top button is your up your bottom button is your down and the left and right is the x y is up and down x is left and right so let's say uh, mine was shooting I'm at plus nine okay so if I was shooting and I needed to correct it and go one inch over I just changed that to eight seven each one of these is a half inch at a hundred yards so if I needed to come over I would do that I'm gonna go ahead and hit the center button I'm gonna push and hold it then you get this okay you have to hit the center button again, which is your menu. Now it's locked in. Now I'm gonna hit the menu again, it pops back up. I'm gonna put it back because this is my, <laughs> what I actually shoot. So I'm gonna take and uh, hit the, the menu button in the center, bring it back down. I'm, going, I'm actually hitting the left side to bring it back up to plus nine. Push the menu button and hold it. Okay, save parameters. Okay, parameters are saved. I like to go back and make sure they saved. Now here's the other thing that they don't tell you. You got five reticles. If you want to use other reticles in the field, then what you have to do is you have to come over here to reticle five. Hit the menu button, come down, put plus nine, and Y23, see this says plus 12. And plus 12 is actually not correct. So I'm actually gonna make a correction on this. I did this in the field, so I must've hit it wrong. So what I'm gonna do is bring this down to plus nine. I'm glad I showed y'all this. And then I'm gonna hit the center button. I'm gonna save it. Now I'm gonna check it, it's plus nine. All right, let's go to one is nine and 23. Two is plus nine, negative 23. Three is plus nine, negative 23. Four and reticle five, they're all the same. So now, no matter what reticle I go to, I'm sighted in at 100 yards. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the reticle that I'm just using for y'all, because you can see it better. I'm gonna go to that, I'm gonna hit the menu button lock it in. Alright, PIP, that's the uh, picture and picture. The way you do the picture and picture, you type, hit your menu button, get on it here in a minute, okay, now you see there you got upper left, hit it again, you got center, Hit it again, you got right, hit it again, and you close. Okay, I'm closing it because I don't need it, but that's all you do to get your picture in picture wherever you want to have it. And that's how you do that. And then once you do that, you do not have to lock it into the menu. You can go to the next one. Scene mode, this is very important. You got recognition and you got jungle. What's the difference between the two? Well. Jungle takes 
whatever you're looking at, like your hot spot, your your hog. It you've ever seen a picture or like on TV, you've got you know the guys on the screen. He's clear, but the background is fuzzy. All the cameras focused on that. Well, that's what jungle is. It focuses on your animal. And don't worry about using all the pixels on the background. The background will be faded and fuzzy and all out of focus because it's putting all the pixels in on your animal, which gives you a clear picture. If you go to recognition, it's like taking a picture. It's like the TV. Everything's perfectly clean all the way through everything. Eats up a lot of pixel, and therefore your animal and the whole picture is going to be the same. But if you go to jungle... Your background, if you don't care about your background, you don't care about twigs and weeds, then your hog will be more pronounced. So that when I hunt, I'm in jungle. So that's different on that one there. Bring it back up. And we're back to brightness and pretty much through there. Um, for the most part, um, that's... Like say, when, when you're sighting it in, I can't, uh, see that's the dress four. And you, all I'm doing is pushing the menu button to go to these different ones. And then uh, that's three, so I'll push and hold it. Lock it in, bring it back up. Okay, I wanted to tell you something else about when you're sighting in, okay. Um, get to the reticle. All right, when you're sighting in, like I say, we've got all this sighted in. Well, you want to fine tune it more than that, okay? Well, what you're going to do is you got to push and hold it, the center button, push and hold it so it will keep this even though we didn't change anything. Okay, now we're going to go to trajectory. All right, passed it up. Trajectory, you have to be on reticle one. Okay, so what we have to do is go back to reticle one. I should have done it when I was there. Reticle one is the only one you can do your one shot. So we're going to go there. I'm going to move this down to reticle one. I'm going to lock that in. Okay, now we're going to move to the flag, which is trajectory. You bring that in. Keep hitting the wrong button. Sorry about that. There we go. Sorry, I kept hitting the dang wrong button. Okay, now we're on trajectory. Okay, I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to go put the two batteries in there, and I'm going to show you how to do this trajectory. So we'll take a pause here. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, hypothetically, we're at 100 yards now. You see the top battery. That's my center mark. That's where I uh, shot at at 100 yards after I got dialed in at 25 yards and then the bottom one down there left of the can bottom you'll see that there was my hit mark so I'll put the second battery there okay so now that we're in to the trajectory if you wanted to fine-tune this you uh, it's best to have it in a lead sled I've got it in this carbon fiber mog tripod but you lock it down. I'm not going to be perfectly on that because it's, it's hard to do on this mog. But okay, so say I'm, I'm dead nuts on that. You see that small plus? Okay, while we're in trajectory, you take your up and downs.
Oh, I'm sorry. See up top, I was up on the distance metering that wasn't the right one. So I'm gonna go down to XO. Okay, I'm pushing the bottom button. Like I say, Y is up and down. I'm just clicking that bottom button and I'm bringing it on down while my crosshair stay on where I fired my shot at. I'm bringing this on down. It's slow. You gotta remember you're doing a half inch every time you click it. And that's about 12 inches apart up there. And this is at about 20 yards, realistically, okay? I'm actually at the bottom of the scale, which you wouldn't be in normal circumstances. Now I'm coming over here. I'm doing the nine o'clock button, which is left. This is for fine tuning. You don't want to try to do this one when you're two foot from the center because it, it's you're going to run out of real estate. Because, like I said, it does a half inch at 100 yards every time you move a number. Well, if you want to fine tune it, then this is the way you fine tune it. So you take and you bring this over. That's about best I can get because the mark's too far out of, far as going down. Once I've got that there, I go to the center menu, push and hold. Boom. Now our trajectory is set right in the center. So next time you shoot, you're going to hit right there where you was aiming. And that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I think I covered everything without dragging this on too long. Um, like I said, you got the TS-25 here, the 256 resolution. The 384 is a little better resolution from 100 yards down, 100 yards up. I can't tell much difference between this one and the other ones. About a thousand dollars difference between the two. Uh, the 35, now you're getting into the upper end, that's your, you know, your luxuries. It's got range finder built into it. Now this one here does have a distance finder. It takes a while to use it. So if you got all day, you can range find. It's where you put the mark on the top of the back, the bottom of the back, push the button, and it'll give you a distance. Um, it's a lot of button pushing and you ain't got time to do all that. So. Anyway, it does have the capability if you needed to know your range. Um, but overall, like I say, this is a meat and potatoes gun. Uh, thermal, I mean. And it's sitting here on top of a um, 223 AR. Um, I do not swap it on my other guns. My other guns have uh, night visions. This is my first thermal, and I'm happy I don't have any intentions of going to spend the $3,000 for another one. Because uh, this one kills as many hogs as my hunting buddy Tom. He's got a $3,000 TS-35 in 384, and he's got three grand in his. Well, I shoot the same pigs he shoots. Um, I've got some videos on Night Stalkers where I shot one just about 230 yards. It was nothing but a white dot, and we're shooting little old young pigs, and uh, I was smoking them pretty good. Anyway, uh, I hope this helps you. If you need anything else if you have a problem with like downloading pictures it can be a pain in the butt too i don't want to keep this video going any longer hit me in the comments say uh you know throw me a video on just downloading pictures onto my laptop downloading videos to my laptop whatever you want to do i will make a separate video for that and i check this stuff daily because it's a new site try to get it going uh greatly appreciate it if y'all could uh you know Leave me some comments. I know I'm not very good at all this stuff, but uh, I do know this stuff pretty well. But anyway, um, you know, if y'all could uh, hit that like button a little bit. And uh, if you could, subscribe, because I'm trying to get this channel off the ground. And, you know, the more feedback I can get from y'all, the more stuff I'll put out. I promise you the videos will be getting better, because I just learned how to start editing. So we're starting a ground floor here, guys. So give us a chance. Um, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.